Welcome friends and listeners, you're with Santos Bonacci for two hours of syncretism. It's a beautiful day here in Melbourne, Australia, the 10th of December, <clears throat> and uh, so which means there's only 11 days for the 21st, the solstice. We're all looking forward to this solstice, we have been for thousands of years. So what will it bring? Well... Uh, what it will bring is what we are going to bring forth from within us to manufacture and produce what will occur with uh, <clears throat> with our lives and uh, our vibration will uh, determine what will actually occur for us. So uh, we're going to talk about that today. I've got a special guest. My guest is Savan Bomar. Savan, are you there? Yes, I'm, I'm definitely here, brother. How are you? <laughs> really good, thanks. I um, uh, Thanks for coming to this show, too. <clears throat> we did a show on American Freedom Radio, and I thought that we just barely got wound up. So um, I had to have you on again so that we can sort of add add to that. But, um, but Savan, you know, I suppose if we can... Let's uh, talk a little bit about the 21st, too, today, um, because it's right upon us, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, as we see that, uh, I guess it's about two more weeks, you know, a little, little shy of that, and uh, we're definitely, or a lot of people are expecting something major to occur, and some people are already just, you know, feeling a little bit deflated, like, okay, well, obviously, if it was something massive, we should see some, we should see wind of it by now. And so there's <laughs> a, 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 a different level of feeling from you know depending upon who you who you talk to about what's going on on the 21st or what's supposed to go on on the 21st and what's up with the expansion for humanity. Yeah. Uh, now where are you at the moment? I believe you're not at your home. You're out um, overseas somewhere, are you? Actually, now I'm I'm in Costa Rica. I do have a place here in Costa Rica, also. So uh, that's where I'm uh, where I'm broadcasting from today. And of course, that sometimes means why our connection is not as strong at times. But um, as far as uh, with the internet, but yeah, I'm definitely here in Costa Rica, just absorbing a lot of the the nature and you know that uh, the necessary energy that comes from realities like this in order to to get Kundalini fully developed. Um, I think I was listening to a Dan Winter recording and he was just talking about, you know, something that's very true, which is how you have to be in, you know, there's several uh, integers that come into being able to awake the energies within the body and the environment is one of them, you know, your food, what kind of information you're taking in. So all of that plays like a vital role and has to be configured properly in order for the activation to really come about. But, of course, you know, I think that with all of this, we should see that individuals that have the opportunity to expand themselves or have expanded themselves do really can really do a lot for uh, for humanity and um, are already doing a lot, but we can definitely step it up a little bit more. But, you know, just getting people uh, activated, even if it's on a, a basic level, means that that's just another person who we rolls into another frequency. So, overall, to me, that means that the entire... Uh, entire spectrum will find its uplifting moment at some point as long as it starts to become serious to us. Yeah, there's no doubt, there is no doubt now, at least not in my mind, uh, that everybody's frequency is being lifted up right now as we speak, even though, even though there's wars, oh yeah, there's Syria's raging, you know, Libya's raging, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't fit in with the new vibration that is still going on. Yeah. But, yeah, but as you said, if you can just wake up anybody and put them on the right track, they might have years and years ahead of them, as we all do. <clears throat> but, but as you mentioned there, Savan, you mentioned that, you know, there's food that can improve your food intake, uh, environment. Some people live in environments that are not at all conducive to growing at all and they don't realize it and they think it's a really natural, good environment. This is why the Chinese paid so much attention to Feng Shui because they knew that energies had to be 
directed. You can't just let energies just, you know, just dump them into your house and just care not which which way they are directed. The Chinese were very careful to put their furniture in the right way, their doors and windows, plants, everything was carefully placed so that maximum energy would come to them. So, well, yeah, for sure. I mean, in, you know, it's interesting you would bring that up, Santos, because, you know, just to kind of get right into this, you know, because I, I love the, the conversation that we can have, too, especially today on this phone, since we're, we're both very versed in different teachings. And it's also, you can see with the feng shui, some people would think, oh, okay, well, they do feng shui, but yeah, but I, I watch Chinese all the time, and what is that really doing for them? I think they just said that it improved their longevity, but they need to understand that there is also this this uh, astral component, meaning that proper energy uh, trans proper energy channeling means that you actually have access to a uh, level of energy that allows you to propel your mental body and your spiritual body, basically in the astral plane or in the dream world. And actually, we just finished doing a show that was like four hours talking about just that particular topic of uh, how to get the body in the in the state status of being able to go into these um you know this this these higher frequencies. And so I see that obviously we're people are building energy, but they're spending a lot of energy too. That's the whole thing. It's like as we get here to galactic center, a lot the emotions. Especially when you see Syria, because Syria is connected to Sirius, it just has to be. But when you see the energy building up and the heat building up, this is how we're choosing to do it again. Go to war and still be angry and upset at each other and not channel the energy to actually propel us into, to, uh, into full awakening, which is obviously we see the Kundalini itself playing out in the physical world even too and in each individual is being challenged even sometime on a nationwide level i'm sure that will be based on their geographical map of themselves on this planet but they're being challenged that when the energy moves through your region or through your country will you be able to handle it or will it just burn you up too with uh heat and, and hatred and so i think that that's also what we're seeing and it's a showcase showdown for better lack of words here at the end of the year because we um you know, we're, we're being uh, given this energy and many people are just spending it because, of course, it has a lot to do with currency. But it, so it, it's spending your, your energy on something else rather than uh, yourself and, and, and building up. Uh, uh, when I mean yourself, I mean your insides, not just, you know, not the materialized, externalized self. So, yeah, man, I, I can see the energy picking up, but I can also see people uh, spewing out more than ever. And it, it, in the waste of uh, of the resources that we have in the reality, continuing to accrue. And so I'm definitely looking forward to getting people in the shape of uh, being able to channel that in, that immense level of energy in the right direction. But we're going to have to walk through this entire thing to a certain extent since we do have two hours. But uh, we're going to have to talk about, you know, our real history on this planet, you know, how, you know, the hatred and things begin, you know, how to put away with it. We can even talk about times in which it was already put away, meaning what we lived like when we were completely harmonic, and uh, which there's still remnants of. And so we have this entire story and, and history that, uh, and her story too, uh, that we have that we exist with. And it's funny because when you can say, I'm a part of that, some people just can get themselves really hard. They have to be a distant relative of somebody famous. But when you understand that we're all distant relatives of somebody famous, you ask how much can you really get charged up off the story of humanity, especially if you don't even know the whole story. And so I think that that's mm -hmm. all we're kind of bottlenecking on the reality is that we're choosing to tell people about one part of this great level of activation and expansion, but there's this other inconvenient truth. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like the reason why things are not like pristine right now, like there's got to be a reason why. So it's like, okay, where is that little chink in our armor at. And I think as a celestial body, which the earth definitely is, and us being a microcosmic version of that same celestial body, we need to figure out because on an individual level even, because it has a lot to do with where you're going to end up in, um, in something that's guaranteed to you, which is your departure from this planet. So I, th I don't think I'm asking questions that are irrational to get the answers fr from, but of course, six years you know, consistently, but really... 13 years has showed me you know that it's it's a lot <laughs> you're asking yeah. for you're asking for a, a great reward in the sense that you're now asking to understand how this thing is even put together so 
So don't don't uh, be mad if it's a little shy of being simple. <laughs> like, I thought it was a simple answer. Yeah, and also and also don't be disappointed if you're not as ready <laughs> as you thought you might be right now. You know, you look around. A lot of the listeners probably looking around, thinking, "Hey." <laughs> The world hasn't improved much, really, in terms of wars and economy and poverty and and all the other sort of strife, chemtrails, immunizations, and all of that still sort of going on. Um, but the other thing is to a lot of a lot of the alignments that have happened. We've had an eclipse. We've had a Venus transit this year. We've had. Um, well, Mercury's been vicious this year, three times in fire signs. Um, and in the last one, just as it entered um, Sagittarius, was a very, very vicious retrograde. <clears throat> Mercury has been playing havoc this year on uh, on people. And so you're going to slip back. You're not going to be perfect and you're not going to be... The, we're still in the dualistic duality world. We're yeah. still going to see the. We're going to see our ugly side. We we will see our beautiful side. We will see it clearly, but we'll we will also be given, um, you know, we'll be given a, a good, clear vision of our evil side, so to speak. So we are being we are being indo- we are being initiated in the science of unity right now, and until we merge with unity, we will always no duality so For don't sure. yes <laughs> a lot and, of listeners and no matter are getting how, no no matter how hard it is for us to do that too that's like the other thing is like just because you don't get it doesn't mean the universe is going to change its mind <laughs> it's like okay well though, let's not put him through it or let's not put her through it no it's like something that it's literally a, a it molds you in itself and makes you available to go into the it's, then it's no geometry but we'll say the shape of the next dimension and it means change, something different than this. And I was, you know, we were we were getting into this, and then we were talking about basically what we can think of as the expanded level. Obviously, has to be different than this. So it would almost be somewhat opposite, even like instead of like every day, you know, you're just trying to figure out what you're going to do, or you put some stuff together, and it's ah, it's like every day you're charged up, and it's like you're 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 basically flying through this thing. So with that that's a big change, and and also it's also getting your your nest, for better lack of words, prepared to to receive that kind of energy and what we're talking about when we get into that. But of course, we can see the mission is making itself ready. So of course, why we're still asking ourselves, will I participate or not? It's like you can see the titans, for better lack of words, getting their gear on, <laughs> and it's like, well, yo, yeah. man. Why are you getting yourself together? Like, why are you still fighting in war? Didn't you guys grow beyond that? Aren't we, like, all in conclusion here that all is self? And you'll find out that that's not the state of the dualistic plane and what it thinks like. It has to learn that. And this is our chance now to tame the beast, which is, of course, in the great rites, especially with Mithras and planet with the planet itself was that as a, a great beast because it was seen as the animalistic natures of the planet, we would have to wrestle and get under with it inside of ourselves, not understand out, but inside of ourselves, or else it would become like a great grievance to us. And you can see in the ancient symbolism that the animalistic nature was seen as a chariot to God, quote unquote. Uh, but then we, we see also in the ancient text a time where the um the chariot itself or the cherubim starts to war and become, uh, uh, basically throw the God off. And this is in manifesting in our reality is us having no control over our physical body and the flora and fauna and the animalistic nature that has been encased inside of our genetics. And not being able to master that like our our, um, our forefathers and foremothers used to be able to, or, 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 or I guess so let's say used to be able to because they're still inside of us. It's just this huge disconnection, an idea of connection, disconnection, which is, of course, you know, I call Skythian, but this kind of disconnection where you're severed from, you think you're severed from your, your mother's womb and, and then you proceed every day in behaving like you don't have a vested interest in this planet, even though it's been feeding us since we came out of the womb. It's like, hey, let's snap out of the Wonderland, Alice, and get to the nitty gritty. Like we need to, we need to at least, uh, a secure home and then we start working on other planes. <laughs> 
Like, I, I don't see why people can't array themselves in their mind something like a military, just in your own body, but say, hey, this is what's really important. All this other stuff is like secondary. I need to know where I am, what I'm doing here, what my mission is, where my substance comes from, who's in charge, who can I pass my complaint to, et cetera, et cetera. Like, if you guys want to run this thing like a civilization, show me where the these checkpoints that all civilizations exist with. And you'll according to their laws, not even a civilization. Because all of who uh who's really behind contact with. I mean in our world, we don't we're not able to approach our father, our king, supposedly our kin, and bring our they just sit on the patio. That that dis uh, ones that are higher, and then, then we should be believing in them and worshiping them. But and get into we all have a part, and nobody nobody's part is more valuable than the other. Like if you're in a body and you don't have a leg, I can't have an arm. Grab something. Hey, Seven, <clears throat> Savan, can you, um, I think you're cutting out too much now. Oh, really? Okay. You there? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and Diatra has got the board, is telling me that, um, that you're cutting out. Perhaps, I wonder whether we can start the call again. I'll just, um, keep going yeah, here. Yeah, let's Come do back that. in a couple uh, of minutes. Thanks, thanks. Okay. You want to try that? Yeah. yeah, let's try that. Yeah, you beauty. Okay. Um, and, um, and we will take callers. Absolutely. Possibly uh, possibly in the next, say, uh, 20 minutes or so. But if we've got anyone that's, um, that's been on the line for a while, Diatra, we can take the call straight away. Um, so uh, please go ahead and do that. Today, folks, uh, we, we're trying to keep the subject to pre preparation for what's to come on the planet. So if you can focus your questions around that, Savan has uh, a lot of great, great research that he's done into the history of uh, this world as it really works. And you, you would know from my presentations that I've also gone and unraveled some of the, uh, you know, some of the secrets of the past. So Savan is, is really, really good at that. So if you can keep your questions to that, um, caller, are you there with the area code 973? Um, would this be me right here? Yeah, nine, uh, sorry, 937. Hey, how you doing, Santos? I spoke to you a while ago, and uh, I accidentally got in the queue. I'm just here listening, so you guys can go ahead. And uh, I really just tuned in, So I'm, and I think 7 isn't even on the line right now, correct? Uh, yeah, he's waiting to come back on. Yeah, we, we uh, had to uh, reconnect the call because he was breaking up too much. Okay. Well, I guess I could ask you a question, Santos, in, on topic, which would be coming up here in the next, I believe we have uh, 11 days to go before the famous 21st comes. Um, what, what can we do better to prepare ourselves as far as what we eat and what we think about to get ready for the shift that's happening. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I, I would be I would be cleaning up as much as possible what goes on, you know, in your in your life. Look around. If your house is messy, um, you know, it's probably a good idea to just tidy up a bit because it has an effect on your mind. It'll it'll help you tidy up your mind. Um, you know, tidy up your yard. <laughs> this might sound like strange advice, but it really does make an improvement. A spring clean in the house will really help a spring clean inside. Um, just, just check out, check out your your emotions. Make check that you're not harboring some resentment against your brother. Check that you're not harboring some some hatred that you don't really need to hang on to right now. 
because these um, these negative emotions, uh, these negative feelings and thoughts thoughts are dangerous. <laughs> Um, they're not really good to have right now. You want to shed those, be forgiving, be happy. Um, you know, don't go out and get another job right now because right now if you've got some spare time, use it to meditate and just and, and throw some love to yourself and your loved ones, you know. Throw it around. Be generous with it. Uh, and smile and, and, and just... Absorb the beautiful atmosphere because definitely our sun is taking us to greener pastures, and uh, the rewards are great. The war- the rewards will be immense in the next few weeks and then thereafter. So, time to love yourself and and really lose the distractions. You don't need to go to that extra football game or whatever, you know. It's, yeah. it's time for you, and and food food is also something. I mean, I do I do believe that we are over overeating. There are people who live on this planet who. Um, uh, Savannah, are you there yet? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Oh, sorry, brother. Yep, I thought oh, you were. Yep. No, okay. Uh, now we just had a caller and asked what we what should we be doing uh, mentally, our thoughts, our food our meditation, what should we be doing in the next couple of weeks so that we can benefit the most? So I was just talking about that. Would you like to continue? For sure, for sure. Um, Of course, I I do apologize for the connection situation. It's been something we've been trying to isolate with Blog Talk Radio. But um, I would definitely tell uh, people to, especially during this time, that understand that there is an energy transfer going on here. That's why there is what staging itself is a, a transfer in power. And, of course, this does take place even on a, on a physical level, so with your body, you should definitely uh, break to the time harmony. It's interesting because a lot of people talk about this time as being uh, a pole shift. And to really understand that exact term, a pole shift is what it wouldn't necessarily be a great thing either. So what we're really searching for here is actually harmony. Down rather than oh we're going to get a push so all the power or oppression they're going to be gone that <laughs> that's failing to understand the exact dynamic and how things exist what's really going on is that this oh oh um okay so then I, I think background noise. I think we we lost the last thirty seconds, brother. Can you um, can you go back thirty seconds? Sure. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where this. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why we have so much background noise. We have like a large amount of background noise. Just, uh, I know. I, I know. That's let me see strange. really brief here. Let me. Um, okay, I think it went away just now. Santos, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it just went away just now. I guess uh, maybe someone fixed it in the switchboard, but can, how can you hear me now? Yeah, it's beautiful now. Beautiful. Okay, great. great. So, I think we just had a line open, but yeah, so I mean, what we're dealing with here is just to, to, answer, that's a, to answer the question, there's of course several different layers of what you have to go through in order to isolate what's kind of going on in your body and, and where you need to, to correct yourself. So I guess we can get right into this, like realistically, just like Santos was saying earlier, it is about your intake, like everything is going to be input. So if you censor your input, meaning that anything that tries to intrude on you, talk to you, poke you, anything that's trying to come into your nose, your mouth, your ears, or any of your other orifices, you need to put a guard at those gates and now start to really watch what's going in. Because what you'll notice is is that your your attention is being vied for and your frequency is being vied for, meaning that something's always trying to take your attention and always trying to change your frequency. And so when you have that going on, of course, anything like ascension and activation cannot take place because you're basically spewing out all of the energy or giving up all the energy that is necessary to get you onto a higher level. 
So let's be the v very realistic with this. If you want results, this is not something that it needed a specific date to get you results. It just takes you to actually feel like the situation is worthy of you needing to wake up. So all this 2012 stuff, again, does for us is give us like a deadline to when you need to get things together. But humanity is really immortal. So times like, you know, when the time going to come you get things together is not really considered by by uh, grander entities such as the universe. It's something that is going to occur eventually as you are take your trip through the crucible, which, of course, is the cross and why Earth symbol is a cross. And you come out of the crucible a thousand times stronger. So I guess, you know, today I would I would love to, as long, especially as long as the line allows, uh, for us to start talking about a little bit of this astrotheology, a uh, little geoenergetics, like talking about these ley lines and these, these portals, uh, some more of the expanses on Earth, like some of the places that have been discovered, like how this, uh, this archonic system works with our planetary system seven days of the week, et cetera, and how that really kind of affects us and how really we need to start using that stuff as tools but start discarding it all together as far as uh, how we build our future world. Meaning that inside of our mind, we're using a lot of these rudimentary tools that are pretty much obsolete in higher vibrations, such as war. And uh, um, you go into your dreams and you have conflict, and you're using now your mind to create worlds of conflict. These kind of things are, are in, the, in more expanded minds don't even e really exist there. So it's time for us to also start separating what we've learned here and some of the things that we need to kind of discard of for obvious reasons, and then uh, start also isolating what is really useful that we've what we uh, that we've learned and discovered here. So I'm treating the universe again like a university, and uh, and really getting my degree in in um, in full realization. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Please do. Yeah, because <clears throat> I was talking about this the other day on a show with someone that. Our words, the words that we use, we can we can always choose words that are best going to reflect that we are enjoying bliss, that we are living in the now, and that we have, you know, that we have settled with the higher consciousness, um, because. And we can improve our language in that way. So lift those containers, because words are containers. And as they come out of our mouths, they have the power to create. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Gr great power. That's what we call spell, you know. When you, someone puts a spell on you, they do it with words. It's really powerful. So that the more we lift the, the quality of our language and the words that we use and how we talk to one another... Um, we can apply some of these tools, uh, Savan, don't you think, that we can that we can elevate our consciousness and our life? For sure. It's, it's at least going to give us some bearing of where we're at. It's like sometimes when you're just looking for like a map in, inside of a vast territory, you should probably start with the language because that's kind of how you're communicating. It's kind of interesting that we can actually now communicate in the language that we really don't understand what it means. How does that work? It's almost like you're, you're, um, it's functionable just on the level of you speaking it with individuals that are also misinterpreting it. But when you get in the arena of individuals who know exactly what it means and what it's capable of doing, it's spoken in an entirely different way, if not at all. <laughs> you see what I mean? So you, we can see that, um, that it's definitely going to take us first to, to understand the language fully and how it was put together, how it, uh, it writes out more or less a program for how we, how we, uh, act in this reality and um and then even being able to grasp it though to understand its meaning gives you glimpses because it's still based on a, a, a overall template of intelligence and that's what we were also talking about is even when man has to bring the language into the physical reality he takes it from the organic realities or from the uh yeah from the organic fields in the geometry etc and so he can give a, almost uh, perfect resemblance of it, but still not it. And I think that that's where the um, the biggest conflicts are going on as far as the multiple dimensions is the difference between organic worlds and inorganic worlds, or worlds where you know there's computers and there's all these devices that man created that are not pushing him forward really, and but there's still people that insist that that it is. 
<laughs> you see what I mean? So it's like understanding how to, to also access the knowledge and information that allows you to jump through time through your dreams and, and through your lucid dreaming and get control more of your astral body, being under, able to understand the difference between an astral body or a, a mental body and a soul. You know, these are the kind of things that, you know, someone can really school you very well in this kind of stuff in about three or four months versus 10, 15 years in a, in a, a modern university and then coming out of there with a degree in more of, I think I know what I'm talking about, but I really don't. <laughs> it's like most of the, the knowledge that is coming out of the universities these days makes sure it severs itself from the universal connection. And so it, it kind of hurts to have our, our brightest minds working on really foolishness because the tools that they've been given are not applicable for a real people or actually, excuse me, wholeness, a reality in wholeness. And so this is, um, this is the, the, comp the competition. And um, I think that now humanity's challenge is we have to metamorphosize this very fast. It only can be done through the spiritual field meaning that the time we need things to change and the amount of individuals that we're dealing with and some of the other entities that have set themselves up as, I guess, opponents, but it's kind of a joke when you look at how they're set up. But the reality is, is that all of that is what stands as a mission. And sometimes I just see it as like a comic book and you flip to one page and it shows you all the, the, all the archons or the, the bad guys. It lays out the mission and then it asks who's going to take the mission. And then, I, you, of course, you would want to shy away from it, like, okay, maybe that's just you've gone too far, you don't understand it. But when you hit the height of all the knowledge and the wisdom here on the planet, and then you still find it there, it confronts you right there, the same old story about the battle between good and evil that take place within, then you start just realizing, you know what, I'm just going to have to do this, and then we'll see what happens next. Because other than that, I'm just going to keep going through this over and over. So I already got that figured out. I've been here over and over again. Now I need to figure out how to actually get out of the cycle. And so that's, of course, something that someone's already figured out. This is the great thing. We don't really approach this like we're the first ones to ever have this notion. It's just you don't find these kind of people at the mall. <laughs> it's like we expect that if someone tapped into the greatest reaches of the entire celestial spheres, that they would be right on Jerry Springer with it or something. <laughs> it's, the, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Like the bridge it's called bridging. What happens is this individual has now reached such a high state of consciousness. For them to build a bridge back to the low state of consciousness is a hell of a feat within itself. It's almost like their next challenge that they've yet to go in on. But the distance and frequency of those who have started coming to full realization is definitely an expanse from those that are still in duality. And so what happens is that you need these it, these individuals who know how to build bridges to be able to come back into regular realities and how they function, but with the knowledge, but packaged in a way that it it's uh, something that this reality can interpret. Notice how a lot of times we, we have this high-level knowledge that we perceive in our dreams or really early in the morning. There's a lot of wisdom and things passing around, but when you come back in the 3D, you don't even write it down sometimes. Or you try to write it down, then you can't translate the idea, and then it's over. So what has to happen is that becoming more fluid at bringing the message that I believe everyone, especially that's tapped in, is getting. Like this information that I'm bringing forth is universal. There's a lot of people who are coming into these same notions at the same time. They may explain it somewhat different, but they're there. So what happens next, though, is, is that how well we can actually translate it, the knowledge and information, our cargo, our shipments that we've been expecting, how well we can translate that and distribute it to our species. And that would be the mission. And it's like, why we're still trying to figure out the big thing, let's distribute Panuncia to the ones that are sick. So we've now discovered it. So there's, of course, a lot of back um, backpedaling. And this, of course, is that, that inconvenient truth when you run upon it, like about the kings and, and a lot of the different diabolical things going on on the planet. Can you keep going even beyond that has been the challenge. Um, I noticed for this, for this particular uh, session of Earth, and we may want to take a break here and just reboot just so we can uh, keep a clear conversation going on, but we'll just keep going. No, 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 you're, you're, you're really clear now. Just keep going, man, because it's, there's no uh, duplexing going on anymore and there's no uh, noises in the background. So just continue. Awesome. I, I was going to write, all the time I think of these really creative titles for books, <laughs> and I know you do the same thing yourself, but one of them is going to be called Escaping the Tetra Fields. 
And this came from just a notion in my mind that, man, because when I just asked myself, well, what happens to a lot of the, the men and women that end up penetrating through a lot of this occult knowledge and they start seeing the, the synchronicities and the connections and they start seeing really all who's in the background and all that, like what happens to them and, and when they don't bring that knowledge to everyone else? And I came up with the solution, uh, the answer to the question, which was few of them escape the tetra fields, meaning that, at, of course, in every religion, in every dogma, there's some god. It all still connects to that same source that I just call Tetra. But the person is so anchored to that that is the real system and that this is where it came from and other people are stealing it and all this extra stuff that comes with it, it basically destroys being able to get even beyond it. So they basically never get beyond the field of where the real duality exists, which is within, of course, uh, the gods and the deities. And I can tell people very clearly why without making it very complex. It came from a simple idea that, of course, after we started quarreling with each other, we still never gave up the idea that we had a God. But this time, we asked this God to destroy none other than our own brothers and sisters, even though we may be mad at them or whatever. It's when you actually pray to something and you give it a name and you say, help me in my battle. I'm about to go to battle with them and you need to make me glorious and defeat my enemies. And then, of course, when if they won, because I'm sure it was like a flip of a coin at first. So if they won, then they would, oh, all oh, hell, this being, he's the greatest of the warrior gods. So thus, anyone wanting to go to war or using that kind of energy would basically pack that name or that mantra with that kind of energy until eventually people got wise enough to see that those, in, those names became concentrated with the energy over history that they were used to, uh, to uh, the things that they were used to bring about. And so this is, um, this is something that we can't forget. That's because it also makes up a big part of our language and, as you say, spelling and cursing and all those different things that we take on every day, but we don't understand what we're saying and what we're doing. And how this kind of looks, though, is like webs. If you saw it on the astral plane, it would look like the person constantly keeps entangling themselves or moving in a web, and it serves to entangle them more. And that's, of course, what a lot of the deeper ones that brought the knowledge, such as Jordan Maxwell, can show you that, you know, with the Merovingian laws and the maritime laws and the birth and the dock and the birth certificates and the social security numbers, all this stuff really means more of your, uh, your uh, agreement to... You're really under it as far as who's your Lord, who's your Moloch or your Molech or your MLK or your Milk. Where's your sustenance coming from? So we can see over time that really the massive amounts of people, we have to realize the masses were always kind of like servants to much of these hierarchies and oligarchies that were just passing these people around based on who was, who was uh, now the new ruler. Meaning that the masses were not the ones participating in the in the great Parthenon and all these different things. They were out there cheering and getting throw bread. Most of the, the all the major happenings was going on between one, a few major bloodlines. But the way they emancipated themselves above humanity is also one of humanity's keys of placing themselves back in the same position, which was one creating the God Man. Actually, uh, Caesar saying, or J.C., Julius Caesar, the original J.C., <laughs> not John Connor, but Julius Caesar, erecting himself as a god, a soul invictus, on the planet, and then giving people that idea of that's what the most highest thing you're supposed to think of is, and then letting the people, like children, watch you murder and slaughter people. So <laughs> look at this. You tell everyone that you're God, but you show them constant weakness. Then they start thinking their god is weak. Then they identify their source of all power as weakness, and then they become weak. It's, this is like a cause and effect. And so now we've actually gotten ourselves into a, a real good position because we can see all that now. There's many people walking on the earth that are intelligent enough to start seeing this. It's like, man, this is not going to get us anywhere, no matter how many different deities and entities and angels and all this stuff to command and all this stuff is going on. It looks like it'll only keep perpetuating the situation. So how am I really going to solve this rather than just selling out? Like I think that that's also, uh, I think selling out just means your sales are out, meaning that your sales are generally supposed to be inside. But now selling out is going into too much external stuff instead of paying attention to yourself. Your sales just hanging out on the corner. But I learned that selling out takes place every day, meaning that every day we wake up and we have that time to actually go into this battlefield 
until the battle is finally over. And then what decisions and choices you make based on what's coming through your battlefield and how you triumph over the decisions you make determine like a not- notches on your frequency. And that's why consistency, of course, plays a, a big key in this because frequency adjusts over time. It's like it wants to make sure that you're you're going to do it this time. Like very few people can change their frequency completely with one thought, especially if they haven't started understanding higher levels of frequency. It takes time to change into this other frequency. And that's why it, it takes the, the actual dedication and the actual action. So there's other things, though, that are happening. I've learned that that's one interpretation. I can stop myself there. That's one interpretation of how to activate. But because there's so many different situations taking place on the planet, there were also different ways to activate. And I've noticed one of the major keys now is within bioenergetics because also trying to fault people for the mistakes they're making is more or less like spanking a baby for something that doesn't even know that it's doing. So you probably would need to work on your approach. I even challenge God, work on your approach. So what happens is, is that in bioenergetics, it shows that all imbalances and disease and pathogens and, and all sorts of levels of infirmity come because the person's biomagnetic field is actually off balance and it is already taking several, taking several hits, leaving it open and holes in it like Swiss cheese or a bad ozone layer to other entities that are on the frequency of the, of the festering wound of the open or aura and that the interfacing between m- many individuals and these entities is keeping them on a power down level because there's a constant draining front of their energy like they're dealing with a leech. And so when when you talk about some of these men and women that came in the past that were able to free people of this, that got the real title of Messiah, all they had was something that is already known about, which was the higher vibratory frequency that is associated when your vehicle turns on and the actual fluid, which goes through your spine, goes up and then down again and continuously oscillates without being able to be turned off. This is about being able to balance the magnetic field. This allows your body to enter into another energy field that is not the same one that you use when you run up and down the street. So, of course, there's been a huge policing on the potential of humanity being able to awake these kind of energies because they are indeed limitless. We haven't even been able to conceive what we can do with these things in a three-dimensional reality yet. However, what we do know is that it will at least become a solution to our problem that will work rapidly. It will begin the soothing. Like notice how when a, when a someone's damaged or hurt or crying or a child is hurt and crying, they don't want to hear the conversation. They just want you to stop some of the pain. So we need to start working with things that are going to start soothing the earth before we go into the big pl- uh, plan of actually uh, totally emancipating the entire planet. We need to understand that our bodies function as this orgone, and the only thing that each individual has to do is come into the level of awakening. Once that happens, their DNA is changed, and then that DNA rubs into others' fields as they're walking throughout the reality like orgone, and it gives their DNA the correction, and then they pass it to other people. It's catchy, and once the DNA fully corrects itself, then you'll see, (laughs) like I guess the, the forces, that's when you'll see them take it off in their shams. Like the ships that they saw show up 5,000 years ago, which was the beginning of civilization under that real term. But they'll see them take off in those ships because the, the humanity that we're talking about is not a game, my friend. It's not something we're dreaming about. I've seen it happen. I've had it happen to me. And I know others even on YouTube, like Dynamo Jack, who has the same power and energy. It's not a mystery. It's not hocus pocus. It's not magic. And the key to it, though, is that. As the masters will tell you, they take all of these conflicting forces and they reign over them, meaning they don't let them fight against each other. It's like basically taking two ferocious lions both by the collar and saying, look, sit down and be quiet because you have the ability to do that versus letting all the animalistic nature run wild and then ravage and rampant the entire garden while your seeds are growing up in it. And so why, notice how, and you can see the sentinels, humanity, is, it's pitiful. We're being coerced so much to bring up darkness. Doesn't it just get to you just a little bit? Like when you watch news, you watch not even news, but the, the programming, the TV shows and things like that, and the rock music and just how they're doing it. They just, hey, take the low frequency. These people start rising up inside of themselves and in, in allowing that energy of someone 
wanting your doom and your children's doom to start converting into, you know what, we got to do something about this. This is just too much now. I can't even get a nap. Basically, this is what some of the sleepers need to say. I can't even get a nap because if I sleep for too long in this dimension, something is liable to happen to me. Meaning that we have <laughs> these people are working with hedron colliders and Merkaba mysticism and all sorts of stuff right while you're trying to take a nap. <laughs> if someone gets it wrong and opens up the wrong orc cloud, <laughs> you know, we'll be looking at how we're still in the vacuum of space with these idiots. Someone with some maturity needs to take control of little brother. And this is of course how the indigenous speak of it. They don't they don't let themselves go off into deep duality like, oh, it's the white man or oh, it's the black man and they say it's brother, but he's out of control. He needs to be schooled. He hasn't seen older brother. And that's what if you look in the story, the real stories of the the saviors or whatever, the Krishnas, which came to deal with a lot of the negative energies, you in the real uh what they say, the messianic uh uh warlike uh, uh, idealism of when the Messiah was going to come and deal with the darker forces, you'll find that the reason why people wanted that is because they knew that many of these forces, such as what we call the Catholics or such as what we call the Jesuit, were dealing with, in the Pauline arts, archons. They weren't even playing fair. It's not like we're just dealing with physicality. Notice what the book says. You're not just dealing with physical beings now. You also have to wrestle against principalities, rulers, and dominions too. Oh, great. Thanks for throwing those in. I was just kind of getting a hold of the cherubim for a minute. Now, okay, principalities. Meaning that you can see that you're pre- a crucible is like Daniel in the lion's den for real. You're in, you're on this dimension. Everything's vying for your control and attention. And then you have to actually rise up out of the entire thing. And it's going on. You don't even get a chance to think if you want to go there or not. It's actually happening. So I, I think that at this point, we should just go into action. <laughs> like at least that's what I did. I was like, okay, you look. instead of me trying to figure out all the time who did this and all that, let me at least put myself on higher ground, meaning get somewhere that's safe in your consciousness where you feel fully comfortable with who you are. That way you know that if your transition comes at any point, you're going out smoothly. I always talk to people about this. The way that you really unlock a master point in yourself is to be comfortable with where you are because that makes all of what happened in the past okay. If you're not comfortable where you are and there's something in the past that you still need to move out of the way, then those are anchors in time. Those are points that you need to reference because there's something still going on there. And notice you can see that happen when a person holds a grudge or something. <laughs> Stop holding the grudge for the simple fact that it's actually holding you back because you're still held in the reference point of time of the energy that you harness when you had the first feeling of what created the grudge. So you can see how humanity is being encouraged to do this kind of foolishness. And then the busybodies that keep it going on, of course, there's humans doing this, but there are also astral beings who have really nothing else to do because they just have no physical bodies. It's like the next stage to this, which is our next expanse is in our dimensionality. If everyone wants to know, well, where do we go after 3D? Your, your next space is the dream world where you control the astral plane, where you meet up with others in the astral plane, when you collapse a large amount of time, not all time, you go to sleep, the dream time begins, it's a lot longer, but it's not infinite. But what happens is you learn things that would take you otherwise lifetimes to learn, a couple nights sleep. That's quickening. So this is also some of the, the systems that were already set up. It's almost like systems that don't need people to run it per se. They're fail safe that kick in when reality start to collapse. They kick in higher knowledge and fail safes that actually push across that that uh, all pervading hive mind of information and say, hey, here's some information that you could tap into. It talks about pure energy. Because don't you know everything in this world comes down to energy? But we've been looking for energy, like I talk about, for these cars and these computers and all this other stuff. I need energy for myself, but I don't want to drain it from others. Because that's the whole other thing, the the the, uh, the draining of energy that we're doing not only from to each other, professionally or non-professionally. And so what happens is, is that if we can't come to the cure, why we're just complaining that energy's draining my energy, and then Madonna, she's on there Super Bowl on halftime, and we just keep becoming the reaction like computers rather than moving into the control point and saying, okay, Somebody's got to grab the wheel of the ship. <laughs> then they'll be like, glad, glad to have you back, Captain. Now, who, where is that ship? Inside. See, every time we go to try to grab onto somebody else's ship, grab onto Earth's ship, basically taking control of something that is not even ours, per se, we always get ourselves into even more of a stickier situation. 
The best thing is to grab the ship inside of yourself. As they say, the UFO, it's controlled by the mind. You grab the ship inside of yourself and you start projecting it into the spaces that are necessary to get you fully remembered. It's, you know, you use that word. I definitely use that term also for those who really know the meaning of it. And so I think that this is something that members of humanity will choose, certain members of humanity will choose, and just those members of humanity choosing will actually cause the spreading of the full activation of the human potential, which is just within the waking of who we really are. And the only way that also you see with DNA that it knows what it is, uh, what it is, is it has to know what it was. And it's, everything grows like that. It has to see what it was before, then it knows what it's going to become next. And that's why this whole erasing of our history and her story is taking place because it's just like cutting roots. You know, you don't have a root because you don't really, really know where you came from. You have a story about where you came from, but not the real truth. You know, they're taking it back 100 years or 200, 300 years with your granddad and them in Spain, but they're not taking you four or 5,000 years with somebody cruising across the galaxy on a, you know, who knows what, what was going on then. And But that's the type of history that we have to inject into the reality because that's also how we're created. We have to see this huge potential in things, even for us to kind of get a half, sometimes even as much as a quarter of what we're really imagining. There's something about even being on third dimension that when we want something, we, if, we, if we imagine just that alone, we always fall shy of it. We have to go so high that even getting half of what I'm talking about right now is going to put you in a good place. And so this is also how you learn how to compensate for the off balance, the wobble on the planet, or the food and all these different things. Just patch up the unit and keep moving. It's like I, I think I also look at this as this knowledge is so potent, this information of what it contains and what, it, what type of expanse it can take a person into. You can tell that it generally was a study. It wasn't something you just throw to somebody over a blog talk radio conversation. But obviously something has gotten out of hand. And, and individuals that they're like, basically, if you can help, here's the knowledge. Just do yourself one favor. Don't become a part of the problem. Because <laughs> we'll be talking to you in a little bit, too. Meaning that you can see that the universal knowledge that is to activate the human is coming to everyone. As far as over the weight, over, over the rating waves, those that are tapped in, it's coming to those individuals. And then what they do with it. It's actually going to set this whole thing straight because it's not just going to be done with Occupy Wall Street and, and just a couple uh, TV shows, et cetera. It's obviously not going to be done like that because people don't pay attention to that for very long. They need a display of, uh, of, of truth. Now, of course, the United States and other countries, their display of truth is war. So we would automatically fathom that our, explain of, uh, our display of truth is some type of ultimate love or something like that. So what you're really looking at is a display of truth is Human being is, in fact, what they say. I mean, not excuse me, not what they say, but they also say it. But what also is that a being that has a high level potential in the coon, cocoon phase, right at their hatching point, if they don't abort and become premature and become encouraged to to damage their uh, you know their their egg before it's ready to do what it needs to do. And so that, that's where I, really where I'm at. Of course, there's a lot more into this, but I just feel really passionate about it. I feel the energy is really cool tonight. And uh, I've been definitely on all day for about five hours. I've been talking about a lot to do with these different planes, so it's really fluid now. But the best thing for people to understand is any question that they want to get an answer to, when like it would be a good time now, I can get that answer to them. And it's not something that a person has to trust me or believe me. It's something that they can go and research because any real truth should be able to be seen on multiple levels. So that's really what I'm delivering here tonight is, uh, you know, maximize truth. Yep. Yep. By, by speaking about what is known uh, by yourself and what is known by the collective. You know, that's that's how I present my presentations, Sivan. I um all I do is point to evidence. So I put the evidence on the whiteboard and I go, There it is. It's looking at you. And and and, and you see, this is how we can find what it is that we know and what is known. And and, and the truth will, will make itself known by by that mechanism. That's why the great Lord said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. <laughs> because 
because it's knowable and it has to be known. It's not about believing, uh, and it's and it's and it sets you free from what, from the lower mind and the ignorance. Second, yeah, is indeed unstable. It's like when you're not sure about something, then you're you're wivering or wick. They call it like a wick. They you you. And so if someone comes up with the exact opposite idea, then the person goes off into the other direction, so they still haven't really accomplished escaping being polarized. And so I, I've been noticing now that uh, we've gotten a full run of everything. Like, with all the information being presented as far as what goes on in not just religion, but also in politics and also within currency, we can kind of see where everyone can look at their hands also now as having some some uh, some dirt on it themselves and also being tied into it in various ways, meaning that obviously nobody can just give up money right now, even though they you look at the dollar bill and you see these occult symbols and things that you you don't want to be related to, but can you stop using the money? So to me, it's not even about putting yourself into this crunch in your mind it's like, oh, I'm, I'm doing this wrong and I need to do this better and, and all this entire dynamic when really you can start saying, okay, let, let me just get out of that entire bag <laughs> because that's all it really is, this whole conviction and all this stuff. And let me actually come to some assistance to the reality because we spend so much time in our mind, if you think about it. Like we spend so much time thinking that our mother basically is being robbed of the time and attention with us for, uh, by us paying attention to things that really have nothing to do with our direct lives. And, and that's the other thing, the, the knowledge that's actually here. Ah, okay. Uh, Savan, the um, we've we uh, we've got a, a caller. So if you don't mind, hold hold the thought though, eh? And uh, we'll get back to that. If you remember what you were talking about. Talking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we'll go to the caller. Six oh nine is the number. Are you there? Uh, caller uh, with 609. Yes, hi. Uh, great conversation. I was wondering, how do you... What's the best way to attract a significant other for the journey that we're partaking in? Definitely a good question. I would first... Uh, it's meant What happens here is, is that their ancient knowledge always shows you that to run after something would expel most of your energy. So that's definitely not the way to go. External is definitely not the way to go from even the energy conservation level to all the way around. So when you're talking about attracting something, now you're talking because we're talking about magnetics. And, of course, your auric field, either it turns, it's either pushing out or pushing out. It all depends on what you You basically have to change your frequency is that you're expecting, and then amplify your frequency. So, so let me explain to you how that's done. You, the field that you're in, whether it's fertile or infertile, determines how fast you can manifest something. And let me tell you the difference between a fertile and an infertile field. An infertile field is like a field that's heavily loaded with electronics, pipes moving at right angles, lots of straight lines, lots of straight edges like windows, and a lot of intrusive objects. So this is an infertile field. A fertile field is just like the fertility that has to do with the women. There's a lot of curves, a lot of trees, ocean, moving waves, all this kind of stuff. So when you're in those kind of fields, your manifestations, especially if they're organic manifestations, I have to make sure that's specific because in inorganic fields, inorganic manifestations manifest faster. And these are basically like material manifestations that have to do with money and things obtained with money and things manifest in inorganic fields faster. But if you're looking for organic, which would be then a, a, like a woman or significant other, someone who's real, then you have to go into a real reality and put the seed there, meaning place the idea and the thought and the intention of that individual there and allow it to begin to, to manifest. It doesn't even mean you have to stay there. But this is like a simple uh, uh, knowledge that we always have of we, what we sow. We sow with our ideas, which spray out of our like seeds, as they show in some of the ancient uh, the ancient drawings. And then, of course, we have our physical seed that makes real life. And then uh, we have our, um, excuse me, so we have a physical seed, we have a mental seed, which is our ideas, and we have a spiritual seed, which is the homaculus, which is a golden lotus, and that's you know that's another level of teaching, but that just has to do with when you finally do obtain raising your kundalini 
at least above the navel, and then that kundalini will always remain there and will develop into in itself an inception because women conceive men uh have a in, men, women have a conception men have an inception so they birth a lot of um of their beings inside and so a lot of times these um that's actually <laughs> excuse me uh, this is a topic that nobody ever covers so I do have to cover it completely but if you read the ancient knowledge and I just have to source some of these books but sometimes I just can't source it because it can lead people into the wrong direction if they can't be strong but what it talks about is that especially within the the pa related religions or the pavisis the phallic or the palace-related uh, religions, that all of those deities were generated through, quote-unquote, the masturbation of the god, excuse me for the censorship. But what you'll realize is, is that man creates things even when he's having impure thoughts. And that creative energy coming out into an external world is also a sign of bringing out a, a negative or dank part of yourself into the negative field. So because it's a seed, it's all life, it's all alive. And so only until we, when we start looking at it like, oh, it's the cooties in which they've trained us to do, we miss the big thing about how our energy system does is determined in our currency level and how well we attract things is all hinging on what we do with our fluids. Yeah. Yeah, the sacred bodily fluids. Uh, did you want to elaborate on that, or I've got a call awaiting. How would you like to take another call? I would definitely like to talk about those fluids for a minute, because a lot of people are going to say they're going to send me emails. Say, well, I heard you talk about those fluids. How can I get those better? So we might as well talk about it now. There's certain products like we have on the site called She Legit. Also, people need to realize my goal is not here to sell you anything. That's why I very little of my radio shows I ever talk about what we have and we provided. We just bought everything that a person's going to need to activate and put it into a store called the Energy Store. But we don't really push the store like, hey, we're all just trying to make money. But you have to know what is necessary if your vehicle is already shipwrecked or crash landed, that the fluid levels in your body that are associated with, especially with the sexual fluids are can either be very runny and even pulse-like or very thick and, and, uh, and, and can even stain things. And the reason why, and this is for the male and the female, is the reason why is that that's like also the, the primordial slime that you grew out of. So the seeds and the germination of life, if you want to understand what the an a great, 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 great ancestors really look like, is more like primordial slime, the generative principle itself. So what this means is, is that the consistency of your fluids, which also have to move throughout your body, and the minerals in which they're enriched with make a big difference to whether or not you're going to even be able to activate. It's almost like if you put regular gasoline inside the space shuttle, forget it. You have to put in high oxygen, jet fuel, et cetera. So the same thing with that is like the Shilajit and the Ayurvedic. These are Ayurvedic substances that actually increase the minerals, things that are pulled from the base of the Himalayas. They increase the mineral system in the body, so the body has what's called deep energy. This is energy where you can feel that there's a cultivation of a hearth or a heat inside the seat of your stomach, which allows the uh, the energy to start to, to build up properly. So that's what we're talking about. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, those sacred fluids. Yeah. <laughs> um, now let's go to uh, caller 702 um yeah we have someone waiting for a uh, for a question so caller are you there with the number 702 hello hello caller 702 might be just a listener yeah your mic's your mic's on by the way 702. Okay, no, we've got a listener there. Uh, all right, so the fluids. For sure. I mean, the, the fluids are, are the keys. And it's funny because you can really approach this. That's why it's, it's interesting because when you start looking at the, the vehicle, it, it needs constant maintenance, right? Like we've gone through several things about what you have to eat, what you have to take into your mind, and what you have to uh, – you, you, all these different things that you have to do. It's like a, a, a 32 point check inspection every time you get inside of your body in the morning. It's like <laughs> feet, check, soccer system A, down, power down, 
let's put it, you know, it's like you go through this check and balance system with yourself. You have to these days to figure out, you know, what's going on with your system of activation. But notice how also that's why it's important for a person to have the spiritual experience because generally the spiritual experience then serves as almost like a carrot in front of the rabbit, for better lack of words, on how they um, – Excuse me, for lack of a better term, but a carrot in front of a rabbit to how much a person now is, okay, this is real. Because as I talk about it, it's just like a man trying to explain to uh, someone about the, the burden and the pains of child labor. <laughs> he can't do it because he can't have a child like, like a woman can. So it's like that also with spirituality. When you're trying to explain to a person what you've experienced or what's happened, they're not going to be able to ever feel the full magnitude of what you're talking about until they have the experience themselves. And then they'll see why your eyes are all big <laughs> and you're talking loud and et cetera, et cetera, as if you stumbled upon the, the greatest thing. And But again, you, you realize after a while you've only began. And uh, so I'm hoping to, to definitely get us to, to those points in, in all of our uh, experiences here on this planet to where we gather up at least what was the most important thing, meaning that if we call a time out here on the planet and say, okay, time out. What if you like what if you pick up that actually is really going to benefit you like throughout the universe? Tell me. And so the person needs to like think about whether they have anything to really share that that will really help them. And um because that knowledge is available here. So of course we want to get people more into understanding that, but the only way they can see it is to first see it from within. Because then if it was ever saw from the outside, notice how it's just all about the inside outside thing. You can see someone die on the cross. And you can see all the pomp and the glory and the circumstances on TV because you weren't even there. But to experience it, to be put on the cross for your ideas, to be smarter than the Sanhedrin, <laughs> to become more philosophical, to walk the walk, to have the disciples, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, that's something that you need to be doing. You don't need to be t saying that only one person did it. That's the only person that will ever do it. And we're waiting for them to come back. The whole thing is wrong. And that's why I have no problem with standing up against it. And to tell you the truth, it's not done without having a full understanding of it. Meaning that I'm not a person who just shuns away religion because I never had tried religion before. Because any fanatic on the line would be like, yeah, because you've never felt the strength of Allah. Or someone would be like, yes, because you've never felt the salvation of Jesus. And someone would say, yes, because you've never seen the, the terror of, or, and been terrified by, the, by Jehovah. But they don't get it. It's because of that. <laughs> it's because that every time of going up the ladder and seeing just like they show in the Hindu paintings another deity there and then having that encounter you're like okay next you start realizing that it's just level and now and then here's another thing if you want to get get the symbolism of it when you climb up one part of your spine you climb up the ladder on your back and you open up one of the gates that are there the chakras you all go inside and you'll find all of these adherents, <laughs> all these people sitting in there swearing up and down, this is the only chakra, and that this God in this chakra is the only God. And then when you close the door and you go up to the next chakra, they'll be saying the same thing, meaning that that's how I see religious studies, that everyone will swear up and down that they have the entire truth. But why is it every time you go and open up something else, you find yet more truth? <laughs> and and there's yeah. something we need to, to take a close look at and just for us to, to break free of um of our stagnancy with how we're we're applying our intelligence. Let's merge it now. We have, you know, I even seen I'm seeing devices now around the dimension. They're like wireless chargers where you can just throw your phone on top of it and they say it's a couple flaws of it now, but you throw your phone on top of it, it charges the phone. This means this thing is spewing energy out through the air. So now we're actually back where Tesla was, which what he really talks about in the prestige when he talked about wireless energy. And how it had the potential to amplify mankind beyond. And so he was there right on top of it. And they stopped him because, of course, Thomas Edison was definitely in, in the Masonic in, in situation. And all the rest of the rituals and things that were taking place at that particular time just to get humanity more subservient. It's like bring little trinkets and, and things that glow to us from ancient civilizations where that was just some way of just the regular way of life. And, 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 and dazzling us with it because we, we were just servants in a cave instead of taking us out and nourishing us. Meaning that servants in the cave, I mean by being in very dominant nations and civilizations that don't educate their masses but expect them to continuously work. Hello, we're in one now. So don't act like it didn't happen before. Meaning before Babylon it was. 
Egypt it was. All these places were synonymous with prison. <laughs> Nobody wanted to go to Egypt. Nobody wanted to go to Babylon. It meant you were going into captivity because these were the largest civilizations. You see, they had everyone just hanging around, basking in the glow of the gods. No, everyone was working, building all these huge structures and temples. But there were also beings there in flesh that struck fear in mankind. And that fear exists today with why we're scared of spirits. But again, there was one on the earth that they say, if you look into the Gnostic text, it broke the hymen of earth, meaning that it came across the Pleroma. It came across a part of the galaxy where no inorganic being or being that has not been developed inside of a womb, an unbegotten, as it's called, was not allowed in the begotten. Meaning that there's only organic beings would, used to live here when inorganic beings come into this type of reality, it's non-symbiotic with the reality like plastic. It seems to attack or even to vampire off of the reality. This is what a lot of these symbolisms like Yalda Bayot and all these different symbolisms that you see within the ancient texts that are really talking about the vampire, etc. They're talking about the inorganic one that did not grow up in a womb, so it does not think the same way as another being that grew up in a womb. If you're talking to an angel, an angel is genderless. It's not begotten because it never came through a womb. So trying to make it act like it's seen, um, you see, everything that we, we have going on in the physical reality with love and titty and milk and, and, and taking care of and crying and, and school and bike and all of that doesn't exist for an angel. But we cannot deny that the angels, uh, we cannot deny that the angels exist. That's also where it's at. It's like, why us running around here, why we're running around here acting like we're the only beings that live on the planet? And in the universe, it's getting the best of us <laughs> because it allows them to remain cloaked with the dagger <laughs> hidden from us and then, you know, carrying on many things around the dimension while we just basically sit back in this childlike phase waiting on Santa Claus to give, give us a couple gifts and to see if we're naughty or nice. It's about us moving into the position of actually saying, okay, we're big enough to get ready to take on the full responsibility of the planet because it seems like you could even do better. Meaning that when you just watch enough of politics just for a little bit to see how crummy it's gotten, and then you see that these same people trying to sign these treaties are not doing, they're only doing that until the resources run down a little bit more, then you'll get that you could even run this thing better, but you're going to need something. And this is, again, why I had to go into the activation, because it, it presents to an equation that's otherwise impossible to solve an actual solution. <laughs> A limitless. So it's almost like it cancels out everyone's doomsday theory. You say, well, how is it going to work? Well, there's this limitless energy. Well, what's it going to do? Well, it's actually limitless. <laughs> so what am I supposed to explain to you? It's got to work in every single situation that's going on with a person individually. This is why the energy is limitless and universal. Once that comes to the planet, then at that point, humanity will again make another choice. It's already here now. They will make another choice, and that will equal where they're going to go next, just like all their other choices do. Next, meaning that Every single point that we come to, whether it's 2012 or whatever, when there's a choice that needs to be made, it was just like the last choice. But are we at the wheel? Is someone driving it? Like I was watching Men in Black, too. They had the guy with the two heads and one guy with the, he was controlling most of what the person does. It's literally like that, where one of our vehicles, mainly the fleshly beast cherub, with the mark of the beast, meaning the DNA is actually struck, uh, destructured, and someone's entered the holiest of holies and broke it. So basically this fleshly creature running your body. When the Candida once, uh, we have to talk about how this works with, with Candida. When uh, Candida, of course, is a worm that you, you get when you eat too much sweets. It's, you know, it's very common. But it multiplies during the, during the time when the moon goes full and also um, the more candy you eat. So what it actually does is it sends this signal to your brain and it says, eat more candy, I need candy. <laughs> and you eat more candy and the candida worms, they continue to multiply. But the thought that you need candy doesn't come from you. And this is why you have to understand, you have to divide your body into these different segments, especially if you're dealing with viruses, and understand that that's the, where the thought is coming from. Because so, when you eradicate the candida, this, this uh, uh, taste of, for sweets goes away too. So it's, it's about understanding why our body is like when you cover your nose, you can't taste and when your ears are clogged and you don't use ear candling, all your senses, your senses are down at least two or three notches. So there's, it's like you can call it like a mysterious holy grail arcana or whatever, but sometimes it's just simply as a wax cone in the ear. 
but something that you still see that the Egyptians were using. And this becomes for times people uh, for people at times just too much. But when you think about how much time they spent in school, <laughs> that was too much because that's when you learn all of the things that don't even really apply to what you're dealing with now, right in the face of a portal opening. <laughs> You're right in the face of 2012 trying to apply Abraham Lincoln's story to it. <laughs> you need applicable knowledge not only for where you are but also where you're going. You can work on the knowledge of where you're going now. This is also what was a delegation within time. We're somewhat being tricked in this world because everyone's got to die. That's the only thing that's guaranteed. So why don't we just work on that? If I was a controller here, we wouldn't be doing anything but working on what happens when you leave here. So you can automatically realize that the controllers here have already figured that out. And that's why we're talking about the eight-pointed star and how it has to do with death and reincarnation and being able to just master that whole thing. You know, the mummification was like step one. Like <laughs> Step two was like the vessels creating the, the golem. And then step three, you know, now it's gotten to the point where they could pretty much calibrate the body and bring it out of a surrogate womb from rail. So... It's like, do you have the ability to scan over the entire earth like, they say, the cherubim that's going and coming? Using your RAN or your physical, mental, spiritual vehicle to go throughout the far reach of the regions of earth and gather all, all the information? That's why I was I was really uh, liking the conversation where it was going. I don't know if that was earlier today or the beginning of this conversation where we started to really see, well, actually, I started seeing this about three or four days ago that the cherub, Again, because it's very important because this is the vehicle of God. This is like God's car. has certain characteristics in it. And then I started realizing that that's why that was the symbol of the Magi. Because what they're actually saying is that the body, which is so difficult to control and is like a beast, but is indeed itself a dynamo mixed with two opposing energies, is the cherub. But now the cherub is out of control. Just like they talk about the Leviathan and the Behemoth were the, the, uh, the uh, Kabbalistic code words for the cherub. So it just means that our fleshly nature has gotten so far out of control, it's just running everything and it's shrouding out our souls, our mental body, everything, because it's the only thing being fed. And that's why I also uh, peeped how this could happen. It's not like the physical body is stronger. Mind is, of course, even stronger than that, and soul is stronger than mind. So what happened? It's because we spend so much time being encouraged to only cater to the physical body that it has gotten this strong. And this would be just like looking at our nations today and say, okay, we spent so much time building buildings for them and, and creating uh, uh, armies and things for them and weapons and stuff that we've wasted like a great chunk of our entire existence for them. So this is how the parallels work. And when I start seeing those parallels and realities, I also see where I'm involved, meaning that you start to see, well, why is this happening to me? It's just not happening to me by default. It's happening to me because I've made some type of agreement or some type of arrangement, even if I didn't know. And that's, again, when you get into maritime law, you get into all that stuff, you realize, yes, you're now also a part of, as we talked about the other conversation the other day, you're speaking Gothic, you're speaking Druidic language, you're pledging allegiance to flags with pentagrams, you, you, you're doing different things, you're voting, you're casting, casting a ballot or a ballot who's the female ball, and uh, you know, you're at the polls. All of the different phallic symbols and, uh, and Orphic symbols that have been going on throughout reality of the same thing, just repeating itself with new wrappings, you find yourself in. And that is, of course, where the mistake of religion comes in, because why these people spend so much time looking at other religions, they fail to look at their own. <laughs> and now see that the true religion, the true temple, as you know, see how Baalbek was laid out, was in the, in the, in the uh, position of an androgen, a cadman meaning the actual male-female being as an entire temple stretched out across the galaxy. That was the foundation of all truth. After that, it just became subdivided. You take the head, you take the feet, you take the... And that's how, as they say, the archons divided up the world and then started going into conflict using humans as toy soldiers, mastering over the animals and the beast as if this is just all like a game for them. And so we move out of this becoming a pawn on the board or just a piece on the queen's chessboard and trying to get checked, checkmate and all this different stuff going on in this reality. And we start moving into, well, this is what's natural for us. Meaning the only thing that I'm presenting to people on this line is actually what we were doing before we got sidetracked. Before we were con that this stuff was actually going to work for us. The same like the treaties made between the United States and extraterrestrials selling us technology that didn't even boost our society to where it needed to go. 
It's like that kind of what I call the monkey's pole. Every time we try to pursue something but we do it the wrong way, we always get a bad result. And so when we see our ancestors make this mistake, why would we go right behind them? Why not just go and correct it for them and then allow them to join us in the correction, living through us, not living through their old mistakes again? And so that's that's also a big part of it. And it seems like a lot of people are, are really asleep and not available to get the message, but believe me, the message in itself, once it's spoken, it travels across another wavelength. It doesn't necessarily need this radio to reach people because it's also the wheel. And that's when they say when your thoughts are your idea, and they call it in, in the Catholicism, it's a bull. They say the bull or the edict. That's when you say something that you really mean, your bull, the ox of you goes out and it's persistent and it can endure. Like it just trudges through rain, rain, sleet, snow, sunny to get to what it needs to, to get to where it needs to go. Wait a minute, so, Savan, please, can you elaborate on that? A bull, an edict, mm-hmm. um, and, and you're saying that it comes from the, well, it obviously comes from the mouth because Taurus rules the, the mouth and the neck. Are you are you relating it to that? Well, yeah, I'm relating it to well. First, the torus also, of course, is very synonymous with our torso part of our body, like the bulk of the ma or the matter or the milk, or the mass or the mu or all of the m of us is really in this this torso or this torus part of us as we can see the galaxy begin to unfold. And so the strong part of us that is basically the what endures, because as you see with a woman's womb, it has to endure a lot when it's putting the child through, is always summons. Basically, that idea is summons when something needs to go that's going to face a lot of opposition but must complete its entire run. So how, again, when it gets corrupted and taken into the Catholicism, the Pope issues a bull or something that is strong enough to carry throughout the lands, even though people don't, are not going to want to abide by it. You see what I mean? And then, of course, there's a lot of flip terminology with, uh, with the bull symbolism, especially when, when it starts getting into the bestial worship. See, what, what the only thing that they did was instead of this, uh, let's say this, these angels and let's say these cherubs, instead of them actually serving us, we became the servants of them. This is the big switch. I mean, that's why you see in the, uh, in the Bible, and I'm not encouraging people to try to master over these beings or anything like that. What I'm saying is, is that it's all written in black and white. Like you can see that when this particular type of species we call human, which is fire and water and in spirit and all sorts of stuff, came into existence, there were other ones that were already in existence. But whatever brought it in existence, which obviously had to happen or we would not be here, made it recognized at that point based probably on frequency that, hey, this one is even more glorious than the ones before. <laughs> and let us all celebrate because this is only going to mean we're all going to get propelled into a higher direction. But obviously some of the other ones didn't see it that way, meaning that we're living in a part of the timeline where each segment of the timeline has now been separated. So the bull of the, uh, that, and this is what we call astrology, we call the zodiac, we call the months of the year. Each symbol is then separated, and now we have to battle that essence and that energy instead of keeping it inside and allowing it to propel us. And this is why even when you go through these, certain, these, uh, these dragon errors, they say you can either ride this dragon out of here or you can let it swallow you. That's the purpose of Alpha Draconis. This is what you read in the books when you can actually get a hold of all the knowledge and information and start connecting it together. So, yes, the um, it, of course, the bull, the etic, and the, the, um, comes also as a first letter of the language because that is, again, what we have, what we talked about before with uh, the first begotten one. And I'm still always trying to figure out if they just took it too far with trying to understand the symbolism themselves and, and bought upon themselves something that they created wholly out of their mind. And we can have a conversation all day about whether we've invented these energies and that's why they exist or whether they existed before us. You, I'm sure you've been to that point in the conversation. But the fact of the matter is is that there are now what what is uh, generally seen as a very bully like energy that is evoked when it is time for something to be passed across that people are not going to agree with. So that's why I was saying about these planets have this, this, every planet has this dark side. Either the cow can be used to till and to bring forth fruit and all sorts of stuff for humanity, or that energy can be used as brute force strength to tear us down. And that's why I think that man and woman, they sit in this point 
of uh, of the real controller. Like they determine whether these basically passive energies how they act out. And then, God forbid, for like for lack of a better term, God forbid that we actually get into a point where we start seeing these energies that we created as separate than us. And they start acting out as if they're separate, like what a dream really is. If you look at the dream, the characters are acting out like they have their whole own roles. But a dream is being wholly generated by the mind. Visions aren't. And this is, again, where when you go and sit down with masters, they, they make sure you distinguish between the two because the dream is, is one thing and deals with in a mental field and other people that you are connected to on that mental hive. But a vision, the soul is being used, and often you feel the shaking within the soul and even the unseating of the soul from the body at times, depending on what kind of experience you're about to have. But that's a spiritual or, or a, a, a occurrence that's based on your spirit. So, again, being able to, to get into a school of seeing how this is laid out is just getting into your body. <laughs> like you'll see that they already laid it out, especially when you go to the Eastern teachings, the lower part of the body from below the legs is the netherworld. And so from above the race, and that's why they show the Muladhara chakra and the one who rules over it, which is the red triangle, that that one rules over all the lower of the netherworld. So that's when that comes to English. It's Satan, the red one, the red triangle rules over the lower world. Okay, so that, and then the fire and everything has to do with the heat that's associated with that area because it has to cook all of the impurities from your body. And so when it stops functioning, you become backed up and toxic. So of course that lower, that mid part of your body is responsible for burning up all of the impurities that are accumulated within the body for real. So it has nothing to do only with these uh, di different deities and entities. What, what these religions have seemed to do is to bring out all of these, uh, these uh, ideas that we would normally deal with internally into an external world and even give them a face, a character, and all sorts of stuff and to the point where they actually become something running around the environment, or at least within our minds. So, um, Savan, you are referring to... By the sounds of it, because I, meant, I heard you mention before that um, mind is stronger than body and soul is stronger than mind. Now, you would, you would be then using soul as a spirit, wouldn't you? Yes, yeah, so the soul in, in itself is like uh, the peace of the all-pervaying or the all-spark, as they like to call it, but the peace of that that resides immortally. So basically the soul, as, the, as many of the ancient teachings show it's really related to the nether in the sense that it contains all of the past, while the mental body generally contains what it's actually obtained and how it's interpreting things in that person's lifetime. It's not a joke. That's why they said that the a, a part of the archonic behavior was developing the brain. This is when we get into the R complex, but developing the brain to be almost something that a person could seem to sub, uh, to uh, to live off of on its own, meaning that. Now, of course, especially when you get with melanin-dominated people, most of them don't feel like they can live off of their minds alone. They seem to have some other connection that lets them know, no, there's a spiritual side. But in melanin recessive, you'll see that there's a high level of mental base, like they're very mental, mentally orientated, and they actually believe, I can live with just reason and, 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 uh, and, um, and, and thought and science and things on just by itself. You see what I mean? Which nothing exists like that, by the way. Like, no one wants to stay in a cold vacuum of space on a cold floor in a spaceship. Like, the reality is we want to be out in some type of Caribbean type of environment, you know, <laughs> bringing, bringing more uh, wellness to ourselves. So the reality is, is that when we look at all this and we trace it down to where the origins and ideas are, you can go into the ancient text and you can find the correspondence to what we're dealing with today. And again, we just have to be prepared for what we actually find there. But if you want to understand today in modern uh, reality what's happening, it's the major bringing everything that uh, that is some of the key, bringing the key components that we need to function on the outside of us, and and that somehow distorts how we interpret and see things. Now. Now, for for the listeners that uh, struggle to find time to do deep meditation. And, you know, they want to just m maximize the 10 seconds or 20 minutes or 10 minutes that they've got here or there that they can catch through the day. 
Do you have any uh, meditation techniques to get the most out of five minutes or, say, the most out of ten minutes? What What would you do if you only had ten minutes? Well, the reality is we have a lot more than ten minutes. It's just about how we're positioning, I mean, what we think we're supposed to be doing. So the best technique is really whole body breathing. And this can be done while you're washing the dishes. It can be done 15 minutes before you're about to go to sleep, preferably done that way. It can be done while sitting at a desk somewhere, just waiting on something, but it's really about the positioning of your body. So, of course, on the resistance side, there's a whole body breathing video, but the basic principles within whole body breathing is that you're breathing backwards. You're breathing into your chest when you breathe and not into your stomach. And what happens is the system doesn't function that way, so you, you're basically inverting your field when you breathe that way. So this simple technique of whole body breathing teaches you how to reverse your breath. And then most of the time when you're doing it, it's at the beginning, right before you're about to go to sleep, your body starts catching on and it does it on its own. And then you'll start realizing that, you know, you'll be a lot more aware in the dream. Sometimes you'll even wake up and your body will be vibrating because this is the actual direction that it's supposed to breathe in. Likewise, when you get into more advanced states of whole body breathing, and I just got to do a new video next week since we're on this again. But when you get into advanced states, now you're you're working on air into the diaphragm, which is in the lower area of the back. And there's three pockets there, which are not hard, especially once you learn how to, 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 to get air into those pockets. And it actually switches on, I could just say, an altered state of the consciousness. It allows you, to a certain degree, if you, especially if you understand how to do it, to exit the body. And this is something that was taught, um, I think the last time we saw this taught was by the Green Gloves to, to the, uh, the faction with Hitler, which was the Tibetan faction that he was with, taught many soldiers how to exit their bodies in the case of an emergency. And so you have to see that the body gets to a point where the mind, of course, is definitely stronger. It can tell the body it does not need air until the body actually loses consciousness. And then the person is aware that they've lost consciousness and they're actually able to leave their their body. This is the height of whole body breathing. Like this is when you become a whole body breathing master, if you want to use that term. But you actually basically learn how to uh, govern the regulatory energies in your body and the surges of those energies and how it's relating to your heart and how your heart is relating to a heavy level of your energy system. Notice how when you start to hold your breath for a certain period, then your heart starts to beat faster. But whole body breathing, your whole body is so oxygenated because there's, of course, you're ramping yourself up for about 20 minutes doing whole body breathing. Your body is so oxygenated, it doesn't really need to, it can really hold its breath for two or three minutes. It's it can actually do that. But what happens is because the general body is trained to only hold itself for about 45 seconds to a minute, the body will actually pass out thinking that it doesn't have any more oxygen left when it really does. Then this kicks on another system where the uh, the person actually is aware that they've passed out, but they're in this this uh, in-between planes. And so, you know, that's, I guess that's enough on that. But just understand that there's different ways to to accomplish accessing the vehicles that we've been uh that we've been placed inside of which when we have control over them it's it's great but when we don't it's a prison so you know at least that's how i see it i see that if i can't control what's going on inside of me then i'm i'm in trouble <laughs> well savan i think you've just given the best advice that you could possibly give because i would um yeah, I would say the same thing, and and uh, and many, many, many great teachers would also concur with that. That to know that you are your breath. Yeah. I mean, it's the first thing given. Like it's a simple process of isolation. Like when we want to see what is really the most valuable to us, we should take and find what we can deal with, what we cannot deal with in the shortest period of time, and in that order you will find basically who who's the strongest. If you want to play this game, like my dad can be your dad. I guess we're, we're always locked in this conflict of basically trying to find the greatest power. And I can see how it drives us and I can see how it holds us back. But if you ever really want to just get to the bottom or the top of it, depending upon how you look at it, you would see that breath is like one of the top things, if not the top thing, because only a couple moments and it's a wrap. Water comes in there at a certain point and then food later on. And each of these, because they're input not outputs, that they would affect our consciousness to a major degree. So the breath and what is in it would affect our consciousness the most. Then the second thing would, of course, be, of course, down down the list as we go down the list. So 
you know, not to just get repetitious with people, but still see, I mean, the knowledge itself is, is really built inside of us because then when we don't get the water, then, you know, now we got a whole other situation. But what's going on with water? Well, water bears uh, a tetrahedron, and it's the symbol of energy inside of water, and it's also a symbol that the sun pushes out. So this also means that somehow the sun and water are the same. So that would mean fire and water are the same. This could really boggle, boggle the mind. Except for the adept knows that, yeah, all opposing forces are actually the same. It's just when you're in a reality trying to make that's trying to make you think that they're different until you gain that lesson, as we talked about in the first part of this conversation, then it's always going to seem like the wrong thing. And so that that's very important for us to see is that the same uh, um, the same symbolism that is that is uh, brought out through light. And this has nothing to do with the controllers and their tampering or anything. And also water, nothing to do with the controls and their tampering, hopefully not. But those, it bears this, uh, uh, this certain symbol that we put inside of our body that by force or else we don't survive here. And so this is uh, where we start to say, okay, well, I'm not going to go into duality and just say, okay, these energies are really bad for us and now we're, we're stuck. What I'm going to say, though, is, is that if I'm drinking good water, then it's one thing. But if I'm drinking poison water, which is also known in the ancient books, which is when the structure of the water is collapsed, like what you see in the in the water books, when the structure of the water is collapsed, like the water in New York, this is called poison water. Because when it gets in the body, all it just basically replicates this collapsed tetrahedron. So this is how, you know, you could just keep connecting it, man. Like, And that's why I believe that this earth is magnificent because once you get a certain degree of this energy and, uh, and the explanation of where uh, the core of things really are on this planet, then you can start putting everything together. It's just about whether you have time to put that across your mind because you'll definitely come up with a solution to it. So, yeah, definitely. And then the food, of course, the food is the beginning of the drama itself because now, you know, when you eat another animal or when you do certain things, and it, it's always a cause and effect. You eat the fish and then you eat, you eat the plant. Even if the plant is just like a, a, a halfway poisonous plant, someone gets sick, this causes a chain reaction. So we can see how everything that we've experienced, the cause and effect, what really played a big role in that in the beginning was what we were eating. Now it's all too hazy. Now we don't know if it's uh, 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 <laughs> Bieber or <laughs> we don't know if it's Jay-Z. Or we know that they're doing a cold rituals. It's all hazy. But in the beginning, it was you are what you eat. And so when you studied the ancient cultures, which, of course, you've done, Santos, you can see that there was a point where there was this heavy belief that if you ate it, you could become it. And this seemed to infest the mind of certain groups of men and women. And this thing seemed to almost become, and this is the time that you see in the Zodiac during its, uh, during its procession, but this became a time where just the, in, the, the act of consuming our own selves and things that we knew to be us didn't even really fade us anymore. And this is like, if you can notice that time would be almost a density of senses. So we probably started changing from that point then. I mean, once we got to a point where we were pretty much Canaan ball, when Canaan becomes the Lord, that's now. Cain is the Lord. He's Moloch. He's Molech. He's the one in the castle over there. And there's several castles on this planet. And people need to ask themselves, who's staying in those castles? So what, what's happening here, though, is that because we're in this time, it shows us that we were actually in the point where we were beginning to consume ourselves. This is thinking that he's an Arab and you hate him. Man, he's nobody but your great, 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 great uncles. You see what I mean? That's why they, the, the name Uncle Sam, they, it's a pun in the esoteric world because everyone knows that if it's another family line, it's only a brother of your God. It's not like some other God from another universe. It's just his brother, and they were all in quarrels with each other after a while. So we see that, again, our, our major connection with with a lot of this is starting to quell this uh, this back and forth stupidity with the knowledge of what really happened. And then seeing so you know what, this is just pitiful. I can keep going on with this for another 20 years, another 20,000 years, and still never go anywhere. Or I can actually see the entire lesson and emancipate myself today. Which one? And, and of course, every time, every day, I make those choices that allow me to be in that spectrum that keeps me on the high frequency because it's a habit now. 
That's the other thing. Any time that you you start to change, it's going to be some type of turbulence in the beginning. But once it becomes a habit, that's all you're looking for. Then it's like normal for you to expand. Notice we're supposed to be that way anyway, Santos. Like everyone thinks that of activating is something that we really have to try to do. We're supposed to be activated. <laughs> I get that straight here. Once you activate it a few times at least enough so it understands what it's doing, then it's not something that you have to keep going into all the time. Now you're just in the, in the at work, meaning inventing and bringing things into this reality that are going to fix the situation. So, yeah, definitely some deep insights with um, – with the, just being able to wrap all the knowledge together and uh, patch up a lot of the holes of where we're missing really taking place here. Yeah, look, the only thing that is going to stop someone from ascending is if they are massively distracted. If they are massi- massively distracted from the course, <clears throat> because we all contracted before we came here to fulfill a contract uh, and to achieve a certain remembering or a certain uh, improvement to, to bring something to fruition. And and if we get caught by the priests and the salesmen on every corner, you know, like Pinocchio pretty much, his mission was to become a real boy. But he was so distracted. Everywhere he went, there was a salesman or someone selling him something, and he got distracted, you see. But eventually he did become a real boy. And um, that's the only thing that's going to be to our detriment, is how distracted are we? Because the more intent and will that we put behind our ascension and our growth, the more we will bring to fruition, undoubtedly. For sure. For sure. I, and I, I, I'm not just a believer. I'm an experiencer. <laughs> because I'm not a, just a client. I'm the president. <laughs> well, basically, this is not something that you know we, we were just talking about. This is something that we've actually applied and it's working. And it's just, you know, you're glancing over into the other ones that have not choose to apply yet. And then there's somewhat of a just wanting them to look, man, you can, you're ready to expand. You're ready to do it right now. But there's just a couple of things that you're going to have to, you got to have the knowledge. And that's why the knowledge and the wisdom is indeed power. It indeed shines like a full spectrum light on what you're experiencing because it throws a rope to you basically in darkness and says, hey, look, here's how to get out of it. Here's how to get out of the ignorance. Here's how to, to actually, here's the knowledge of how your vehicle works. Here's the manual to this system that you've been put in. And so that, like they always say, babies don't come with manuals. It's the same thing with the body. It doesn't come with a manual. So the only thing, as you talked about earlier, you have to gather the knowledge that you know and the knowledge of the collective, put it all together, and start making heads and tails with it, of it. And then also seeing that that is what you have to do. I mean that for yourself, not for everyone else and all this other stuff that you can cook up in your mind to get you not to do it. But the reality is still for yourself is to, to, to get the full comfort of understanding what's going on in the dimension and get the answer that you need to yourself to confirm what, you, uh, what you're about. And that way you can stand firm. It's like the root to us, again, is our information of where we came from and who we are. You see it as a magnificent story at times, especially if you can imagine some of the creatures that were here and then your survival and your uh, your survival of your, your lineage and your line all the way through to this point. And so we've endured a lot of things, but now we have to use that as our benefit and not as our what's made us basically like um, <laughs> dysfunctional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, did you mention the word pleroma earlier on in the, uh, in the show? Pleroma? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, I did. Can you can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, in the in the documents of the Gnostic Barbello, like I, I got a chance to go through, um, like a lot of the um, a lot of the really from a level of lucid sleep. Like I, I really, my Gnostic part of the adventure was really one of the most animated portions of it, and it really works a lot on intent. Like, of course, with a lot of the uh, the knowledge that's being passed around, that archonic knowledge and the names, you can definitely get yourself on the wrong path with dealing with Kabbalah. But if you're actually just a person with uh, the intent, and I can speak of what I did in the past, and looking for the truth and going across these systems, I started to come across the the deeper story, which, of course, John Lamb Lash is, I believe, one of the best to explain it, but which is about the Gnostics and the Archons and, uh, and, of course, the Ophites. 
in many of the, the earlier races and how they were dealing with the situation taking place on the planet and how they interpreted what was happening. And there was an idea, of course, of the all-pervading powers of, uh, of creation and just how that force in itself was so it was not something that really could be interpreted, but when we attempted to interpret it, it broke into several different entities, and this later on becomes the archons. But it's easier to understand how it, from a level of a massive level of energy, beginning to go through, meaning going through the actual process of a womb. And I started noticing this is the same thing that happens with the baby. As the baby starting to come through the mother's womb, or even when it's conceived, it starts to pass through other parts of the organs and go down and, and, be, and, and pass by certain parts of the organs until it comes around to where we are on Earth. And then from that point, it then goes through the center and then comes out. And so this same thing I suspect to find also in, in the trajectory with the universe and how we enter and exit it. And so when you go deeper into the Gnostic teachings, what you'll find is that the reason why the archons became known as the beast, two by two, that Noah's put the beast in the ark, which have a lot to do with the core design of how we were created, which is basically the, 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 uh, the fleshly component to how a human body is created, that each of these people function like a Voltron, for better lack of words, where each piece has a portal or an eye, and this is why animals have different kinds of eyes, that the portal of the eye that shapes that particular part of the individual, which determines why they are the way they are, basically why the legs behave like the legs and why they're big, and all the extra details that most people don't think about that had to be thought about in creation. Remember, in creation, you got to think about everything, and that's, of course, the key to lucid sleeping is because you have to think about every single piece of what you're creating to get the maximum experience out of the lucid dream. So, again, what we're dealing with is, is we're dealing with... Um, the interpretation of the plot, the powers that um, that were that were basically the forces that created the planet, as they're saying, and so it also talks about how those forces were also penetrated by a group of beings, and um, and then the what they gained from going through this all powerful force, it was so much more still powerful than what anyone had seen yet that they could proclaim themselves as gods over humanity. And so um, that's really what I meant when I mentioned that earlier, is about them going through basically the energy, gathering the energy, and then telling everyone after that that they're the ones that actually created the divine powers and the energy. Um, so, yeah, that, that's really what I had on that. Lovely. Um, now, going to... You, you speak about Kabbalah. Um, is there, in your opinion, good and bad Kabbalah? Well, I mean, I think there's different kinds of Kabbalah. Of course, there's Kabbalah that's oral resuscitation, which is really more like just them giving a, uh, giving you the Kabbalistic tones and the vibrations and the words that are associated with the, the deities around the throne. And then there's this other Kabbalah, which is more popular today, which is how to apply the Kabbalistic or Hebrew language for practical reasons and, and helping you make choices in life. Um, and then, of course, there's the deeper Kabbal, which has to do with the stone that fell from the sky and all the rest of what that entails, because obviously we have a planet full of relics and different things that have different essences. So it's not just limited basically to our small imaginations. There's other things going on. So I think it's just all about uh, Kabbalah, of course, is more of a depth Thing, uh, especially if it goes beyond using Kabbalah as a general practice in life to, to, to make decisions, which I don't think is a good idea either. I think people should start making decisions on their own, not using umim and thumim and casting dice and things to, to make major decisions. We're smart enough to do that. But uh, what happens is, is that I, I think that in the past, it's something that you definitely end up coming across, and it becomes very vital to you being able to interpret what exactly you're dealing with when you get into other parts of the path. Um, especially from the tones and the vibrations level, which is really the only uh, benefit that I saw personally in, in Kabbalah was the actual origins to much of the numerical equivalents to the characters in the English language and how they cross over into Hebrew, especially that of the W or the Shin. So what happens is that I basically found the master code to many of, at least like a Rosetta Stone, for better lack of words, something that can kind of gauge what's going on in other languages within the Hebrew Kabbalah. 
Um, so just from a general level, like if you can think, okay, every word of this Hebrew language corresponds to a number, then you immediately start asking yourself, in other languages, does that same system apply? And then another thing, you start realizing that there are certain words in Hebrew that contain an immense amount of power. So the next thing you want to know is that there's the same configurations of those words in other languages have the same effect. And then once you find that out, then you see there's a network. And I said I believe that that's, that's like one of the keys to Kabbalah and actually probably the point where you should give up Kabbalah is when you see the network, when you see the hierarchy of angels and the array of the tetragrammaton, etc., it's basically like you either join the club, which is what the Illuminati and the Masons and things are participating in, or you go and you, you create your own light, which is understanding. So you either basically pick up someone else's book and story that's already been written and just um, recite. That's, that's what you're, that the name actually for the adherent is basically something like a reciter, meaning you just repeat what they tell you to repeat. Or you go on this more expansive level of discovering things that maybe most people have not even experienced yet. So that's really, um, you know, that's, what, that's what's up. That's what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it separates the, um, the opinionated ones from the knowers. The reciters, the repeaters, from the ones who have done their research and actually know separates them, doesn't it? More. I mean, that's really what also happens is, is that you realize that even, just as they said in the in the Bible itself, that if the, if the ocean was ink and the trees were uh, uh, pens or, or uh, styluses, there still wouldn't be enough to write about all the deeds and things that have gone on on Earth and what's been taking place here. And so it's just about, if it's an encyclopedia, though, are you going to read the whole encyclopedia? Some of us are choosing to do that. Or are you going to pull the book that contains the information that you need to know now? And that's also what I would ask when people especially approach me these days is just, you know, just come to me exactly with what you want to know. The protocol is going to just waste a lot of time. But because that's the fa because the faster I can get the information to you, the more time you have to spend on whether you will accept it as the truth or not. But when you look into these religions and you actually been through many of these religions, you do see a redundant story. But that's just a story. If you actually ever experience the interaction between some of the entities that are resonant with inside of the religions, then it's very easy for you to, to see when you're dealing with that same entity again. It's like because these invisible forces work on a different level that's inside the body. It's, it has a lot to do with your senses and basically the most sensitive side of yourself. So the most sensitive side of yourself is very, it can de determine what exactly it's dealing with very fast. And so that's why I could, could sense energies, especially when I would be in, uh, in the mosque. There's a certain energy there, and I was able to identify that energy as still being separate than the one that you find in the church, but then the, the church being an entirely different angle, meaning that they just run it differently, like how Rome figured out that if um, all great empires, and I see we have four minutes left, but all great empires rise and fall, but if uh, if you can, because the people would eventually, the masses, just like what's happening now, would eventually figure out that they were working and building up all the stuff for these few different people, or only a few people that were benefiting off of the whole thing. And then the people would rebel. There would be some charismatic leader, i.e. a messiah. Everyone would follow him. He would promise that everyone's going to get emancipated from the situation. After great blood, bloodshed, there was some kind of truce. And then until everyone can rearm or re-legion themselves again, things would be quiet. <laughs> so... When you're actually seeing that that's the that's the kind of reality that we're we're kind of twining around in, you choose to take another route. And I know I kind of skipped the subject a little bit there, but I just want to tell people since this is the end of the conversation, not to get too long winded in that other topic. But now you just choose another route instead of making a choice. Just choose not to. <laughs> like with the whole uh, presidential election, just choose not to vote. Like at times, sometimes we put ourselves in these positions where we're we're trying to make a decision when we're not even prepared to make that decision. We need to sit down and actually study and start increasing our frequency so that we make decisions based on what we can really see, not what we're being told. And then all this stuff will start coming to the light, and this will allow a person to, to increase their spiritual spectrum. I mean, that's what it does. Wow. Savan, we've come to the end of the show. I'll just have to thank you so much for being so uh, gracious with your time. You were on uh, air four hours in a row before you joined us, and um, that's really much appreciated. The listeners here will be very thankful for your time that you spent with us. Can you please just um, 
share with us your details and anything you want to squeeze out before we um, we go off the air. The person wants to check out the information. We have the largest uh, occult library on the internet or spiritual library on the internet. It's free. You can check us out at astroquest.com. You can also check out our TV station where you can get nonstop consciousness. It features all your great Santos, is all, of course, on there, Bonacci. We call it Bonacci time. But uh, it's also uh, Jordan Maxwell. Many of the other greats are on there, and you can choose to listen to that channel at uh, www.theresistance.tv. So www.theresistance.tv. So just come check us out. We always have this new – we have actually a new platform. I'm definitely going to have Santos on where we're able to source all the pictures and images related to what we're talking about. It's a lot more interesting. And then, of course, we, we should really start working on having a lot of fun with this. And that's where I'm, I'm really at now, especially with developing new ways for us to, to get this wholeness and then actually be okay where, where we're not just you know all distraught after we've had some type of spiritual experience so we can do this together. Beautiful. Thanks, Savan. Thank you very, very much. And um, listeners, uh, let me know if you uh, would like to have Savan back on. I would uh, like to just have the guests that the listeners uh, would uh, like to listen to the most. And I will take one or two extra shows this week. It's been offered to me. So look out for those because I'm going to get folks like Matt Presty and Robert Ote back. And I'll probably do just some astrotheology myself. Uh, and some syncretism of my own, but I'm going to take some extra shows. Okay, so look out for that. I will advertise them well. Thanks, Ivan, and um, we will talk soon, no okay. doubt. And thank Lovely. And you. take care, listeners. You'll be hearing from me soon on the other shows and, of course, the weekly one. So thank you very much, and I believe all my time is out. Bye-bye.